Hey guys, how are you doing? Just uh, getting back to the playthrough of MK9. Uh, this time we're going to be playing as Liu Kang, uh, who's pretty much the main character, I guess you could say, of of the franchise. I mean, he's not really marketed that way, and I guess, I mean, it makes sense uh, in the same way, because, uh, you know, he's not American, and uh, it's just hard to market him you know, as the face of the franchise, as opposed to someone like Scorpion is completely, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like a ninja, but like a maskless one that doesn't really have a nationality or anything. You know, and Scorpion is a lot like Kratos, and it, that's why it's, you know, that's why the fact that Kratos being in the PS3 version is actually so fitting in this game. Uh, but Liu Kang, you know, he is supposed to be the main character he's supposed to be the hero of the storyline and uh i mean we've seen that in the past mortal kombat games and we've seen that in the in the mortal kombat movie um where he was uh, also the main character and he ends up winning the tournament and that's considered uh the canon result of uh, of the tournament but you know uh, like it was it was a similar uh thing in the game street fighter where we had uh you know Ryu being the the main character, but you know on on the box art, uh, at least the one I had, which was I believe a uh, Street Fighter Two uh, Championship Edition. Uh, you know it was it was Guile fighting Bison, so I always thought Guile was the main character. He was the American character, uh, but you know it it was Ryu. So I guess you know American marketing forces you to uh, kind of um, you know adjust the uh, you know the basic premise of, of your game uh but anyway uh we're just gonna start with uh Liu Kang here we might have to see uh yeah this is uh Cyrax's cutscene from last time uh Cyrax just basically getting fed up with uh serving Shang Tsung and ends up fighting Sector a fellow member of his clan okay so this is Ermac's introduction Right, so this is Ermac, and he just described him as a combination of souls. You can see that here, just uh, it's all the souls coming out of him. Be wary, Liu Kang. He is unlike anything you have fought before. Liu Kang! You are the sole Earthrealm warrior to progress to this final stage of the tournament. I am ready. Right, so apparently Liu Kang is the only one that survived this horror. I mean, we know Johnny Cage lost, uh, we know Kung Lao lost, we know Nightwolf lost, and uh, I guess Sonya never really took part in it, so uh, here we are with Liu Kang being humanity's last hope. So the things you need to know about Liu Kang, uh, here's his special moves here, it's his fireball, he can do it in the air, he has a high one, he has a low one, uh, it's like he used to use his uh, dragon kick there like that, uh, hits there, and of course his uh, classic, uh, uh, the bicycle kick here, which I'm trying to do here, there you go, and he also has a few other moves here, uh, including, I get that. Uh, he has this parry, you try to hit it like that, he parries an attack, and um, I believe that's it, let me just check if he has anything else. Uh, yep, those are it. Uh, he also has a stance change, uh, you know, not quite as useful as Sonya's, but, you know, he can do stuff like that, and get a combo. But the bread and butter of Liu Kang's uh, arsenal are these two strings here. This is his 2-1-3 uh, and his back 3-1-2. Uh, back three, one, two. So this is his 2-1-3. You can just keep comboing, keep repeating. It's, it's kind of boring to watch, kind of cheap to watch, but works very well, especially in the corner. The last hit hits overhead. So with that, we just took care of Ermac pretty easily. I'll get uh, more into Ermac later. He's got a pr pretty interesting origin in terms of uh, how the character was actually developed uh, based on a glitch in the game, basically. I will ensure he does not reach the final challenge. So 
So like I said, uh, Katana is an assassin working for Shang Tsung. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that. We'll find out she's actually Shao Kahn's daughter. And it's a lot more complicated than that because she's actually not Shao Kahn's daughter. Uh, Bo Raicho was, uh, you know, he's a sort of a martial arts teacher, I guess. He trained Liu Kang. He, he shows up in the later games, um, generally considered the jumping of the shark for the Mortal Kombat franchise. Just pretty much the face of Bo Raicho. Uh, if you don't want to take my word for it, you can just look him up. I believe he has a move where he vomits, and the opponent slips on it, and he uses that to get an opponent into a combo. So yeah, that was definitely not, you know, the uh, the best years for MK. So Raiden just explains to Liu Kang about his broken amulet again, still trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Going on. Uh, as far as uh, this timeline is concerned, nothing has actually changed so far. I believe everything has gone uh, exactly as it did according to the uh, the original tournament. I mean, they of course they added a few things, like there was never a, a scene where Liu Kang faced off against Katana. It, you know, like this is just some adding some uh, exposition. You know kind of fleshing out the story in the universe a little bit more. So Katana's trying to uh, come in to kill Liu Kang under Shang Tsung's orders, and uh, Liu Kang's basically just toying with her. Uh, Alright, so, you know, I'm just gonna keep doing this. Uh, another um, tactic we can introduce here is it's the first character with an air fireball, and you can just see how fast I can do it. it just jumps, it's called the instant air fireball, uh, kind of tricky to pull off. I'm not really doing it at the optimal height, but you know it becomes a very uh, useful uh, way to basically get get away from your opponent and set up a defense all while uh, building a lot of meter. Because like I uh, like I said before, uh, special moves build a lot of meter. Uh, here's this flying kick. Uh, the enhanced version is armored, a lot like uh, Johnny Cage's shadow kick. Uh, and uh, let's uh, let's try to pull off. His, oh, I got hit by Katana's X-ray here, so. Um, let's pull off, uh, Liu Kang's X-Ray in the next round. So again, we can just build meter doing this. I, I mean, sorry if it's boring you, but, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, useful tactic. So anyway, uh, Liu Kang can basically combo into his X-Ray with uh, uh, his uh, back 2-3. I mean, if those first two hits connected, it would have automatically comboed. It's just that Katana stopped blocking. You can also combo after the X-Ray like that. I mean, granted, Jump Kick is not the best follow-up, but uh, you can do all sorts of crazy things. And... Two. Has flying kick, uh, went too far. Let's just jump and punch. Uh, so yeah, that, that, you know, 2 1 3 and the back 3 1 2, uh, it's, they're very useful because, you know, they're very simple to do and, uh, it gets, you just repeat the inputs and you can drag your opponent all the way to the corner just by doing it. So there we just found out Shao Kahn is her father, um, and Liu Kang trying to show her the way, like the, uh, again, uh, sparing one's life, it's becoming a recurring theme with Johnny Cage refusing to kill, and then Cyrax, and now uh, Liu Kang. So he basically just lets Shao Kahn's daughter get away, I'm pretty sure he could have used her, you know, even if he didn't kill her, it could have been a, could have been a better... It could have been a better choice than it is to just let the person that was trying to kill you just get away. He's already said that before. And...
this fight will be a little bit difficult. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, to pass it with pretty pretty easily. I do not fear you, demon. Fighting with Scorpion, the sorcerer of Quan Chi. So like I said, uh, the, the two one three, the last hit hits overhead, and the back three, uh, back three one two, the first hit hits low, so it becomes very useful. Um, uh, this is the first time we're fighting Quan Chi, it's very annoying, especially that teleport kick he has there. So that flying kick is very unsafe. Uh, I can, I've already lost a lot of life. So just got lazy there. Yep, not, not a good first round. Let me just try to concentrate a little bit more here. Some bad wake up decisions on my part. Again, that flying kick has not been working out. I don't know why I keep doing it. There we go. This is easy. Messing up some combos here. There we go, it's a much better round. So Liu Kang is very good, he's very good at rushdown, he has those mix-ups. Uh, he also has the, you know, these fireballs which recover very fast, especially if you do them in the air. Uh, and he has uh, the armored uh, flying kick, is also very good. The bicycle kick is also armored uh, in the enhanced version. Uh, this round not going well so far. I'll see if I can uh, make a comeback here. Wow, this is going very poorly. All right, that did not go well. Let's try. Uh, let's try this again. Round one. Fight. Yeah, just dropping that combo. It's very uh, uncharacteristic. So I mean. Really, uh, it, you really want to just get them in the corner, or you can just keep looping uh, those strings like this. Yeah, that's a good 35% easily. Flying kick for some, you know, variation there. Oh, this time the uppercut. Just get another uppercut. That. Oh, okay. Just getting some bad punishes on his uh, teleports there. Wow, that that enhanced fire just got me out of the air. It's pretty good. Right. 
That enhanced teleport stomp or whatever is super annoying. Oh, fuck the best ray. Okay. Wow, that was weird. Oh, I should have just kept doing that. He kept waking up with the enhanced teleport. Alright. Well, might lose this round, but we still have a round to go. Oh, he, he keeps waking up with that teleport. Should just uh, start respecting it, I guess. Round three, fight! Oh, there he goes again. I don't know why. See, like, I find the computer is very annoying just because, you know, they know when you're gonna do a move and they just, they'll, you know, it, they'll wake up accordingly or, you know, do an anti air accordingly. Thank God, not not my best play there, but As I said, pulled through in the end. I pity you. you have done well, but the tournament is not yet over. Goro, what's a Goro? So Goro is the. Reigning champion. Uh, he he is the one that has won this tournament nine times in a row, going for a tenth. I don't really know how this tournament works again. Like, it seemed, I don't think Goro has even fought anybody yet. So I don't know if like, there's like a bracket or anything, or you know, Goro just gets like uh, an infinite number of buys until you know there's only one left. But regardless, here we are. I mean, the tournament in the old games was just a ladder. It doesn't really make any sense. Like, you know, you're fighting against just one guy has to fight everybody. But whatever. I did not expect to fight in this tournament, but eventually, even the Shaolin. I mean, that's weird because I'm pretty sure that Kung Lao was the last one that won this tournament. Uh, you know, Kung Lao is like great grandfather or something. His his ancestor. Something like that. That's why, that's, you know, that's one of Kung Lao's motivations for entering the tournament. Either won or lost or something. He, either way, he got far. Anyway, Goro is very, well, let's just say he's kind of a pushover. I mean, you can see that my attacks aren't doing the same amount of damage. They're doing a little bit less, but he's just a big punching bag that, you know, I can just keep hitting. And, you know, it's very easy. You, his moves are very predictable. They do a lot of damage. His X-Ray uh, does, like, over 50% damage. But, you know, it's he doesn't really use it that much. At least not on this difficulty. So, on, you know, on this medium difficulty, it's pretty easy. You know, he's got his stomp. He's got his throw. His throw does a lot of damage. You know, like... Almost, you know, yeah, 23% there. You know, I've got, oh, I missed my answer, I bet. And also, you don't seem to, it's, I don't think it's possible for you to ever be, uh, throw them. It always kind of just, like, glitches out or something. Oh yeah, just wait for them to do something and then attack uh, during their animation. It seems the Shaolin 
and a warrior greater than the Shokan. Yeah, so that's his race. Uh, same race as Kentaro and Shiva, the Shokan race. I mean, it's kind of weird that it builds up so much tension, even though we know who won. Uh, but you know, it's all—it's all for show, I guess. Shang Tsung, only one fight remains. Face me. And so this battle uh, officially closes out the MK1 story arc, where Shang Tsung is the boss. You know, remember, Goro was the uh, sub-boss. Uh, Shang Tsung is very similar to Goro in that sense. You know, except he can transform at will to anybody he wants. Um, he can also soul steal you, which does damage, and he gets to turn into you. Uh, but... Just, you know, the same strategy I've been using. It's very... Uh, see, like th that's that's the exact height you want that fireball, so they have to block it, even though you're doing an air file fireball. So it works as an anti-air. Pretty easy. Uh, and that does it for MK1. We are officially done that game. Say it. Oddly enough, every character we've played as, except for Cyrax, was in Mortal Kombat 1. I don't know if that was a conscious design decision uh, or, or, no, or not, but you know, it's pretty interesting. It is weird that Cyrax is the only one. I guess they just couldn't fit his, you know, abandoning the abandoning the Lin Kuei story arc anywhere else, so they had to put him into the MK1 arc. I mean, uh, M Cyrax wasn't even heard of in MK2, let alone MK1. See a little uh, uh, s sort of nod of acknowledgement from uh, Liu Kang as he sees Katana. So yes, that amulet is still fractured, you know, as it should be because, you know, nothing has changed so far. Uh, MK1 went exactly as how it did in the, in the original timeline. So that's our first look at Shao Kahn here. It's a very weird uh, decision by Shao Kahn here. He basically not only lets Shang Tsung win, uh, I mean not win, but he not, not only lets Shang Tsung live by, for even though he f completely messed up, but he also gives him his youth back for some reason. Um, I don't know why, he seems... He's portrayed as far more ruthless than that uh, later on in the game, as you will see. So there's that Mortal Kombat uh, medal, I guess he wins for saving the world, you know, but it's better than nothing, I guess. 
so here we are. We are going to be playing as Jax. I guess it's the after party of the uh, Shaolin monks. Um, official, uh, we just saved the world party. Um, so there we see young Shang Tsung. I mean, that is also canonical. Because uh, in MK1, Shang Tsung was this old guy. And in MK2, Shang Tsung was like this young guy in suspenders and a beanie for some reason. Uh, I guess they got rid of the beanie in this one. I see no reason to participate in any plan of yours. The Emperor proposes a single tournament to replace the current system of ten. It will be held in Outworld. If Earthrealm does not win, Outworld will absorb it. But if Earthrealm wins, Shao Kahn will abandon his claim to it forever. Give your Emperor my regards. So again, this is weird. Uh, he basically he's basically forcing Raiden to fight in this Outworld tournament by sending a bunch of Tarkatan, you know, soldiers into Earth. I, I don't know how that's legal. I mean, the whole point of the tournament tournament is that Shao Kahn has to use it in order to invade Earth Realm, but instead he's just doing it anyway. I don't really know, like what. The point is here, like, if he can just invade anyway, why is there a tournament? You know, if he doesn't think he can win in the invasion, then why doesn't Earthrealm just fight the invasion? Uh, whatever, I guess we're going to Outworld for MK2. Uh, and we're going to be playing as Jax. Where's Sonya? Shang Tsung has taken her. We've got to find her. We must follow them. Shang Tsung has made it clear that Earthrealm will be under constant threat. Unless I agree to a new tournament. Another vision? Yes. I saw Liu Kang win the proposed tournament. I believe we must attend. But my earlier vision of your victory over Shang Tsung was not the solution I sought. Therefore, this premonition must show an event I need to change. Perhaps he must win refers to another. I mean, that's a very strong leap of logic based on a single image that you had in a vision. Um, and that's also a very weird way to an accept the tournament by just announcing it to the sky and the sky apparently acknowledging it back. Um, don't really know what that medallion is. Uh, so you saw that that dragon symbol on the uh, that metal that Liu Kang got, and you know the dragon symbol is the the symbol for Mortal Kombat. I believe that is actually a picture of Onaga, but I'm not 100% sure. Onaga is a character that's introduced much later in the games, um, in like um, Mortal Kombat Deception or something. Regardless, it's not something that we have to worry about. Also, I have no idea where this is. It's not the throne room. It's just some random room that Jax has invaded. I don't know why. They have like a hundred soldiers. And, like, it's just weird. Like, I don't... I don't know. Like, this doesn't seem official at all or anything. But anyway, that's about it for... Uh, that uh this mk1 is finished we are now officially in mk2 with the first fight being two mk2 characters uh with jackson baraka and uh hopefully you like the Liu kang video i know i didn't really get it uh in depth into the strategy of Liu kang just those basic two strings the uh the three uh the back three one two and the two one three um you know but that's just those are just his very useful strings and he has a lot more he has a lot more tricks and tools but uh if you're interested in playing Liu Kang I would just suggest you know playing with those first because that's how uh you know you'll get a hang of the character and you know try to build around those basic strings and his you know fireball game um 
but you know I could be wrong and uh, you know the the experts or the high level players know a lot better than me so again uh, check out testyourmite.com to see what they have to say and um, uh, you'll learn a lot more there uh, you'll learn a lot from there a lot more from there than you will from uh, my videos at least um, but anyway uh, that's it for this video um, again please uh, subscribe if you're liking these and uh, please uh, f you can follow me on Twitter uh, at erad uh, with four D's unfortunately um, you know I'll be announcing uh, every time I uh, I'll be tweeting every time a new video is up and uh, that's about it for now and I will see you for MK2 uh, shortly.